Hey y'all, welcome back to Bits of an Artist's Life. This is Sandy Hester. I am so glad that y'all enjoyed last week's video where I bring, brought y'all along on our trip to Santa Rosa. But here's the thing, ever since I've been back, well, I think even on the trip, I was taking note of things like, this feels, oh, here comes Ben, our cat. Um, this feels cumbersome or just things I was taking notes of. And when I got back, I've been thinking a lot about Hey, Finn. Yeah, I'm filming right now. Oh, you're gonna come up? Oh, okay. Well, we're filming a video. I don't care, Mom. Okay, I guess I'm just gonna have this going on. You wanna be in the camera? He's just gonna lay down. You may hear some purring. He gets purring pretty loud. Um, okay, what was I saying? So since I've gotten back, knowing we've got more trips coming, I've just really been thinking about things. And I love thinking about the way I could repack it, pack things, how I could pack things differently, how I could use materials differently, how can I, I mean, I, I just love that. I love thinking about that stuff as I'm falling asleep. So there were two big things. One, I didn't like the way I was carrying my supplies in, hold on. Just a small, <laughs> it's like, ooh, what's that? Clear plastic bag like this to dinner with my sketchbook. And I don't like rifling through bags. I feel like it's loud. So especially at a, I was gonna say a hotel, at a restaurant, I feel like any bit of noise of like, I think I'm a loud rifler also. I'm real loud with it. But I just feel like it's distracting. The last thing I wanna do is draw attention to myself. And I also feel like it takes time. I just want my stuff laid out. I wanna know where the piano keys are, where to grab that pencil, where to grab this pencil. So I've ordered a new bag. You may think, why didn't you get your mom to make one? My mom is out of the pencil roll making business. Um, ben, those are my color pencils. Let's not eat those. So I ordered a new bag. I cannot wait for it to get here and I cannot wait to share it with you guys. I think it's gonna be a game changer for like when I go to dinner or coffee shops or in the car or on a plane. I wanted something really small where I could carry very limited materials. I'll make sure the camera's focusing on me and not this cat's back here. And just something smaller, but something that wasn't gonna be loud. I like to be able to just like carry my sketchbook and something really small. So I've ordered something new for that. My bag just got here and I can't wait to open it and I wanted to open it with you guys. So I split the top and let's open this together. It came very simply wrapped. Bring y'all down some. And it has the peg and awe like a little postcard. Well, thank you for your purchase. I can't wait to see what this feels like because I've had in my mind the way I think it's going to feel. Uh, ooh, it's so darker than what I thought it was going to be. Oh, oh, I like that even better than I thought. It's a little bit more like a light tan. It's not as... This is the Art Creation Sketchbook page. That's the color I thought it was gonna be. Really light. This is perfect. Oh, that's pretty too. Look at the little detail. Can you see the detail on the strap? It's not as heavy as I thought it was gonna be either. And it's nice and tiny. Let's see what it looks like opened up. It's exactly the size that I thought it was gonna be. Oh, it feels great. It feels kind of like, a, well, a waxed canvas, which is what it is, but. I think that this is going to be so perfect. Yeah. Okay, so I ended up getting this almond color. That's the name of the color I got because of a couple reasons. I do think that most people probably would not get a light color, though it's not as light as I thought it would be, which I'm happy about. But I felt like most people probably would not get a light color because they wouldn't want to get it dirty. But that's that's fine with me. I don't mind things looking worn and getting paint on them. But I also 
What sold me on a light color, because I kind of went back and forth, is the fact that I really do want to use this pouch for Neo colors or whatever I use it for, actually. I do plan on putting Neo colors. I wanted to be able to see in there really well. So I knew a light color would be the best thing for that. And let me grab some color pencils. See, I thought I was only going to be able to get one pencil at a time early on because they say that this stretches some, but I can easily get two in there right off the bat, which is quite exciting because I thought, well, I'm going to have to work at that. Oh, they go in really nice. Gosh, I think this is going to be perfect. In fact, I've got a coffee date with a friend and I may go early and just pack it and take this. Oh, let's see. I have my watercolor palette that I really like is the Art Tool Kit and it's the largest one. Yep, it's going to fit in that perfect. I don't know if I'll use it for that. Um, and then I also forgot back here has two pockets. So I could put it in that, but what I'll probably do is stuff this with markers is what I'll probably do. Does that go all the way down? Yeah. Okay. That went all the way. Quite a tall pocket. If I wanted it shorter, I may would stuff something in there. And then let's also just for kicks, yeah, I don't think a water brush right now will go in there, but it'll go in there really easily. I think this is gonna be a fabulous purchase. And then I'll also have been thinking a lot about materials. I took way too much. I mean, I don't know. It was just really ridiculous. And I got home and thought, I have got to pare things down. So I kind of thought about, um, I thought, I really wish I could get back to just watercolor and have a little palette with water brushes. I was just thinking how simple and wonderful life would be if I just used that. So I am going to work on getting a palette together. I'm going to show you that. We'll do that together. And I don't know if that will work. I don't know that I can just use watercolor. I have been loving, hey, sweet boy all the materials and layering materials up. So I don't know if I can give that up or not, but we'll see. I think if nothing else, I don't know, we'll just see. So I'm gonna bring you along on that. In some ways I love all the materials and love having those there and use this and this. Whoa. Um, could we not knock things over? Oh, he's like, could we have a belly rub? But what was I saying? I don't know. Okay, this, <laughs> do you see what the animals do? They always like, my brain can't function. Okay, so I don't know what I just said, but basically I've been thinking about a lot of that. I want to bring you along as I kind of work through those things and try new things. So here's where I was playing with some of the colors and figuring out which colors I wanted to put on here. I gave a ton of thought to the color palette, like what I already use, things that would mimic some of the markers that I really like. Like I put this rose I can't remember what this color is, but I really love this Faber-Castell marker that is called Beige Red. And I found that by, um, I think it's right here. It's not really thinned out too much, but I could get that same kind of color. So I try to be real thoughtful and I want to get back to being able to color mix. And I also have this smaller version of the same palette and um, I'm going to use it just for mixing but it's kind of funny this looks like a lot of colors but here it doesn't look like a lot but I put all the colors that I put on the palette I put in one box and I even labeled it so I wouldn't forget because I do that sometimes and then I made a color swatch so I would remember just in case for some reason if I grabbed one of these and took it someplace I would have color swatch of everything that's in here. And that would also allow me to kind of decide if I needed some other colors, if I'm mix missing anything. So this palette will never look this pretty and clean again, which is fine with me. On my palette here, I did not put the brand names because to me that doesn't necessarily matter. And since I've got everything in a box here, but I did put the names and I put if it was a gouache or not. I got cracked up because sometimes I was spelling gouache correctly and sometimes I was leaving the A out, but who cares? And then some of the places I went back and just put a G because I forgot to put gouache. So that way I would know which colors are watercolor and which ones aren't. I think I just was thinking that way I'll know if I'm having issues with mixing them. If they're too getting too muddied, I'll know that that color could be 
a problem color. So what I'd like to be able to do is get to a point where I really like the textures and the depth that I can get from using watercolor and maybe just color pencils or watercolor and neo colors, just really small palettes. So I'm going to start practicing and working on that. Also stuck a little piece of charcoal right here because I do like sketching with charcoal sometimes. So I thought, well, if that's there, will I remember that that's there? Probably not, but that's okay. It's there. So that's what I've been doing. And now I'm going to get on the task of learning these colors again. All right, let me show you what I've got going on here. I'm packing up this morning to go out and paint. I am absolutely determined to get watercolor under my belt again. It just feels like such a more manageable thing. I still want to be able to build up layers, but I think between watercolor, it's kind of my base layers, Neo Color 2s and some color pencils, I'm going to be good. So I thought what I would do is go to a place that I'm very comfortable with the environment, I'm comfortable with the scene, and paint something that I've painted successfully many times as I learn my palette. Yesterday, I sat down and used this palette and painted a couple things. I was not like wildly happy with it, but that's how things are when you first start something new. Um, I mean, I've painted in watercolor with watercolor and gouache for years and years and years, but I've been using other things lately. So it does feel new again. So I did this bird. It feels a little flat. It doesn't have like the depth that I usually have, but I mainly use the watercolor and gouache and didn't layer up a lot. It got a little muddied. I think I was being a little timid with it. So then I thought go bold and Oh, interesting. I did not put a piece of paper in between because, oh, maybe I closed that when it was wet. Tore a little. Oh, I forgot. I put something there. I was testing. That's okay. I'm not worried about that. So then I did this using a painting that is in a series that I'm working on right now and thought be bold, loose, big brushes, and I was a little happier with this. I still did not use like colored pencil and stuff to build up the layers, which I think I need to get back into neo colors and color pencils. So I did that. I was a lot happier with this paper also. I wonder if I should put a piece of paper in between that. Yeah. So I thought this morning, I mean, this doesn't look very light, but part of it is because I'm gonna take bigger sketchbooks. I was really giving some thought to the paper and I'm gonna take this Stillman and Burn Zeta series. It's bigger than what I want to use. It's like the 10 by 12 or whatever, but this paper I think will hold up well to a lot of stuff. And then I'm also going to take, just in case I'm having to like put some layers down and then set it aside to dry, I'm going to take two, which just feels like a lot to get two fully done sketches done. And then this is my moleskin. This paper is thinner but can still take quite a beating. So I feel like I need to not only figure out the watercolor, but I need to figure out what sketchbooks and paper I like before the end of the summer trip. So I'm going to take this small watercolor palette, which is the Art Toolkit. I'll have um, links below. I think Art, Art Toolkit still may have a discount code that they've given me, so I'll put that link below. This is the big one. This is like the medium size and I've got, whoops, a piece of charcoal right here and then three empty palettes. I like to have plenty of room for mixing and then I'm also taking, this is a lid of either yogurt or oatmeal, which is white or the, kind of off-white. So I'll have plenty of mixing space. I don't know why I'm doing this, but I threw in some other gouaches, mainly just because I just bought these and they're kind of lighter colors. So I thought, well, I'll take that. And then I threw this green in that the lid won't go back on. It is a hooker's green watercolor. So I thought, well, I'll throw that in there. I'm also taking two Poscas because what I want to be able to do is have the freedom that I usually do with acrylic paint or like my paint markers to to be able to build up and build up and build up. With water, with watercolor or gouache, you'll kind of start muddying things. So this way I can, if I do a big wash of something and let it dry, I can go back over with this Posca, the white and the beige, and then 
I think I'll be able to use my watercolors on top of it. We'll see. Then I'm also taking a bunch of water brushes because I don't want to have to take any water. And these Derwent's, which again, I'll have these linked below, are my favorite. I'm taking two sizes, basically the large, that's supposed to be round, but I love that it's kind of like, psh, and then several of these larger ones too. So that will be nice to not have water. Then I've got this little spray bottle. All of the stuff I'll have linked below. Let's see, what else? My box of Neocolors. And these are mainly Neocolor 2s, which are water soluble. I break them in half so that way I have a set at home and a set to go. And then I have a few Neocolor 1s, which are not water soluble. And then I have a couple Daniel Smith watercolor sticks in here also. And then in this box, what I decided to do, I bought these clear boxes. And I like them because not only because they're clear, but when you lay them flat like this, what I like to do is put my cool colors on one side and my warm colors on another side. So I put my color pencils in here, and then I think what I'll do is, when I get there real quick, put my warms on one side and my cools on the other, so that way, I can find things a lot easier. And then I'm taking three, no, four of my tried and true Liquitex paint markers, acrylic markers, the Burnt Sienna, the Parchment, Raw Umber, and this green, which is what color? Emerald green, but I think I've put some something else in here also to dirty it up some. I do that sometimes. I'm gonna take those. I feel like this is pretty limited I want to get even more limited, but I need to see what things I enjoy layering on top of the watercolor. So, and maybe I'll just end up using watercolor, who knows? Oh, I've got some clips. I'm taking little stacks of paper towels that I've folded up. These are the Viva, which I love. And then a stack of Kleenex also, just for being able to wipe my brush off. I don't know yet if I want to take Kleenex or paper towel. I can't remember which one I like, but then also have something to blow my nose on, which is nice. So all this I'm going to pack in my bag here, along with a little seat that I sit on, and that's it. So I'll let you know how things go today. When I get back, I'll show you what I painted. I'm not expecting it to be good, but that's okay. I'm gonna enjoy being out. It's a gorgeous day out. And I cannot wait to just paint and play. Okay, I thought of two other things that I wanted to tell you. Let me tell you this first, because I think I'll forget. The reason I'm taking a larger sketchbook, because I actually find that I can get more done if I go smaller, but I don't have these two brands right now and smaller. But I was thinking if I take bigger and have more surface to have to work on, that maybe while I'm working down here, this will, it will give this up here more time to dry. So that's what I was thinking. Let's work big. That way there's more area for me to kind of work on and things dry. I don't know if that will, if that concept will work or not, but that's, that was my thought process. The other thing I wanted to tell you, a lot of you guys have asked about the little seat that I've been using. Grady got this for me. Right now it's all just like this. There's a little bag that it goes in, but I just wrap the seat part around this, like this and stick it in my bag. But this is like for backpackers. I'm not gonna set it up right now. In other videos, you can see what it looks like, but I did wanna tell you the brand because a bunch of you have asked. It's Big Agnes. And then, I don't know what this particular one is. It's called, this is what it says on that little tag. Skyline Stool. They have them in like three colors. But I really like it. It's really easy to set up very quick. If I think about it while I'm out today, I'll try to get a picture of it and put it here. Okay, I'm back. It's later this afternoon, and I want to give you a little update on how the day went out there. I wasn't out there too terribly long. I had to use the bathroom. So I only did one sketch, and maybe it didn't feel like very long because I just did one large sketch that didn't even really feel that pushed. I had 
50 million people stop today. I have literally, literally never even had a smidgen of the amount of people. Every third or fourth person stopped or said something. Uh, I could not believe how many people. I, on the way home, I was like, what was the deal? So I did think about the fact that I sat closer to the path than I usually do because the tree that I usually sit on under, the foliage was hanging down, so I had to come out closer to the path so I could see the Parthenon. But I could not believe how many people came over and looked, and everybody was really sweet. Um, it was really nice about the sketch, even though I did not think it was going well at all. But it was funny, a couple, I had a couple people that were like, oh, that's real pretty, or that's real nice, that you could tell that they were, you know, not real authentic. <laughs> And I think it messed me up a little bit mentally. I was already dealing with this, you know, medium that I wasn't used to. And then all these people stopping and I felt like I didn't push things as much as I usually do. I ended up using the Stillman and Burns sketchbook. This paper is super, super thick, which was nice. And I liked the paper a lot. Um, I think one of the things that I like about having water brushes, not water brushes, like paint markers, is that it pushes me in color because, yeah, so I think I felt like I was just using very standard, like a green tree and green grass, where I think I, usually I push things a little bit more. Yeah, so there it is. I did do this fountain, which I think was okay. I want to push that a little more next time. This white duck is probably my favorite part of the whole thing. I don't know what it is. Maybe because it was simplistic. And I like these people. But I think other than that, uh, no, no, no. Okay, I do like some of this up here too. Other than that, I don't hate it, but I don't like it either. But I went prepared knowing that's how I was gonna feel about this. So that's totally fine. I know that there's gonna be a learning curve. And I've just got to be okay with things that I'm not in love with for a while. That's the only way I'm going to get better is if I keep pushing and pushing and pushing. And I know I can do it. Um, or I, I say that, you know, Grady this morning said, you may not, you may not end up liking it. And that's true. Um, but I won't know unless I try. I mean, the longest thing that I ever worked on to try to learn was, um, mixed media, like layering stuff. I just thought I'm never going to get this. And I finally did. And I feel real comfortable with mixed media. So I'm going to just keep trying. So what I did this afternoon, I thought, let me give it a go. I want to try it in my art creations, try to go smaller. And I pulled out two sketches that I've done previously. Both of these, I think I did there. Yes. So the very first sketch I ever did from this view is this one. Okay. I don't know if you're in the same position. The battery was low, so I went and changed it. Okay. What I was saying was this is the first sketch I ever did in, from this position here. And I loved, I loved it. I feel like it's still one of my very favorites. And this was another one I did there that I really liked the color. Just, I like all of it. So I took these two sketches and the one that I did today had all of those laying out around me. And then I did this one, which I'm a little more happy with than today's. I mean, look, very, very blue um, water, very green grass, just not, I don't know. Or see here, I'm, I'm using, I don't know. Okay, let me just stop complaining. So I felt a little happier with this. I did it pretty quick. Real happy with this back here. And yeah, so I've got to just keep practicing. I guess that's basically what I'm trying to say is I need to keep practicing and I'm going to practice here in the studio. The more that I look at this, I do like this area right here. I'm pretty happy with that. I think there's a feel of like the water splashing. Okay. Is there anything else I wanted to tell you? Yes. I took, you know, all these water brushes. How many did I take? Five. Afraid that I would like blow through the water. So I used these two. I did use a good bit I have to turn it this way to show you, but it was basically, basically about here. I did use most of the water here and hardly any of this water. So that tells me I don't need five, but maybe two of each will get me through. So I'm going to just keep practicing and playing. I want to encourage you to not give up. Everything I've put my mind to, everything that I'm like, oh, I can't draw cats. So then I just 
focus on drawing cats, 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 cats. I think in like two days I was like, oh, I can draw a cat now. Or this mixed media thing. I mean, I just tr pushed and pushed and pushed and pushed and m made myself use it in everything that I did when I'm working in the studio or out. One of the things I wanted to say was how much I enjoy that process of thinking about things and I don't know, the prep and thinking about how I could use materials different, even though I feel like I've just figured out how to layer things and use all these mixed media materials. I get bored really easy and I don't know, for me it's just a lot of fun to kind of work on a new process or think about a new thing. Okay, let me show you what I was talking about. Sometimes it's fun to be able to take like this color. This is the beige red. I could probably look up what the pigment colors are, but sometimes it's just fun to figure it out yourself. So there's the color. I use this one a lot. This color is the Rose Dore. Dory? I don't know how you say that. That I have right here. I feel like it may not be real light fast, but I kind of don't care. So just on its own, thin down, it's already pretty close. But if you add a little of the raw umber to dirty it up, I love raw umber, umber to dirty things up. I can probably get quite close. Look at that. I was just watching that footage back as I was editing and I thought, no, I can get a lot closer to that color. I was thinking, man, you should have added some yellow ochre to that. So I was playing around with it again. So here's the marker. And I'm going to take that rose color again, add a little bit of this yellow ochre. And that, that makes it a little too yellow. But if you add just a little, whoop, that's too much. A little bit of that and a little bit of the burnt umber. Because like right there I was able to basically get it exactly it. And watercolor will dry it. That will dry just a little bit. I can't remember now if it dries darker or lighter. But I think just a little yellow ochre to that made it quite a bit better. Let me make sure yellow ochre. I always get raw umber, yellow ochre. Yeah, yellow ochre. I was right. It needed just a little bit of that yellow. So that's a little bit closer. That's a better mix. And that was bugging me while I was watching the video. So now I'm going to go back to where I was mixing another color for you. So sometimes it's fun to try to figure out colors like that. I also love this Faber Castell Earth Green. And I bet, bring it all down. I know I want some raw umber, or is it raw umber? I always forget, raw burnt, yeah, raw umber. And let's take this green, which is this one, the Turner Gouache Permanent Green. Pretty close. needs a little blue. So those are the kinds of experiments that I like to do to figure out my color palette. I like to have a lot of just the basic colors, yellow, yellow ochre, burnt sienna. I kind of have three versions here. No, two versions of burnt sienna. One is a little more opaque and lighter, and one is just a good standard warmer. And then uh, warm and cool blues. I've got two browns here to be able to dirty things up. One that's a warmer because it's just so nice to be able to dirty things up with a brown. And then the cooler raw umber. Need to fill that sucker back up. Whoops. And then I've got like a dark navy kind of, whoops, didn't clean my brush. Dark navy blue. Two grays here, 
lighter and darker. Those are kind of nice to dirty colors up too, because like this gray, which is, I have gouache, gray number one and gray number three. Gray number three is the darker one. Let me clean this palette a little. So I like this gray and to take maybe like a yellow to get a nice dirty yellow, uh, green. Super nice. And then to take that lighter gray, you get something a little different, a little milkier. But then other than that, basically like a, what color is this? That's a carmine. And a warm red, cadmium red orange. A few kind of just neutrally greens. That one's gonna be dirty because I put the red in there. Is that I have moss green, terra verte gouache, and then the one I already showed you, the Turner. I have a really warm yellow right here. You know, you think of like duck bill, kind of orange or yellow, yellowy orange. That is this marigold. I love that name, marigold. And then just three of my gouaches up here. I may have already gone over all of this. Oh, and this right here is black because black and yellow make a wonderful green. You just can't get a better green. Both of these yellows would make great greens with the black. So there it is. And then uh, I have gouache, which is just white gouache. And then I have three other gouaches. Oh, Payne's Gray is that really dark blue. Then I have just an ultramarine light. I have this as my lighter blue, aqua blue. Okay, but I wanted to show you. Ah, so I have primary white. Then I have this buff titanium, Daniel Smith. Then I have this, mm, I can't read that name. Naples yellow, I think, and flesh tint, but that's called something else now, rose something. So there's that. Okay, as these are drying now, you can't even tell which one was my marker. I think that was my marker, but these two look so close to that. So it's nice to kind of find substitutes and mixes. So I, because this is a key on the piano, I already know, and I reach for this. This is a piano key on the a key on the piano I already know. So if I can find that same key here, that's always helpful. I think that will help me transition a little more. Okay. So I'm back to kind of process and I want to show you some things. As I've been this week kind of playing around with watercolor, I'm feeling a little over it. I'm going to keep pressing through, but I, one day I was just kind of like, all right, I think I want to go back to my old way. I think I'm <laughs> with watercolor and I was flipping through a sketchbook that I just sketched in with watercolor and came across some watercolor and gouache sketches that I was like these are great I love these and I thought okay keep on with it so then I was thinking about like okay paper is really important with watercolor so I got a bunch of my sketchbooks out I thought this morning I want to just sit down do some color swatching and do them in several sketchbooks see which papers I like best. I know what I'm looking for in a paper. I was reminded that white is gonna be a lot better because it allows the white of the paper to shine through. And I found one that I really, really like. So let me show you that. I wanna show you the sketches that I came across. I was like, these are really good. Why can't I do that now? And then I also pulled out some books of some artists that I love that work in watercolor. Not to remind me how to work in watercolor, but the things that I'm working on this year are composition and value. So darkness and lightness and other, sometimes people call it tone. So I really wanted to take a look at how are people using watercolor with tone? How are they getting things to pop? How are they using it? Yeah, just how are they using it? So I want to show you a few of those books. So the watercolor swatches, the sketches, and the books, yes, three things. So let's go do that. So I'm back to like, I'm gonna 
I'm going to figure it out. I'm working on it. It's just a process. I, I wanted to say this though. You know how earlier I said I really like to think about things. Like these are the kinds of things. This all feels like a science project. It feels like something I'm working towards. And I enjoy it. Nothing about it feels frustrating. It feels really fun to sit down and just make color swatches and different pages. I'm reminding myself of the keys on the piano. This key and this key play well together and reminding myself. So right now I know which markers and uh, paint markers and color pencils to pull. Like when I'm thinking about a color that I want to get or a value that I want to get, I know what to pull. And I've just got to remind myself of that in watercolor and what those notes are and what they do together, how they play together, how do I get lighter stuff, how did I used to use the brush, all of those things. So for me, it's a lot of fun. I never tire of it. So I had a blast this morning making all this. So let me show you. Let me show you the watercolor sketches since I've got them out right now and move some stuff out of the way so I can show you. So let me show you my least favorite. This is in the Art Creations. This is some that I did some other time. I don't know what that was, but these are some of the swatches. It looks fine, but there's a dullness. There's something about the cream paper um, that's dull. And this is a sketchbook that a friend of mine gave me from Jackson's. What is this? The Lay Flat I really thought this was going to be promising. There's some other swatches I did another time and another time. But again, when I compare it to the Royal Talons, it's there's something about some paper that the watercolor granules sink down into. I really like it when it has a nice sizing where they sit on top. Some people really, really like thick, like, Arches paper, I think, is a real popular one. I've never understood it because those granular sink down in there. So I, I definitely realized this is not what I want, even on this white paper. It's better than the art creations, but it's not what I'm going for. So what I found that I really liked, I do, I, I don't know that I'll use this little sketchbook. I don't use it a ton, but this is, what is this? Handbook journal. Oh, I have a larger size of this. I have done a lot of watercolor actually in here. But this paper is kind of in between white and cream. So it's got a slight tint to it. But the, the paint sits really nicely on this. I liked the texture. I liked the color that I got. It didn't look dull. So when it goes dull, that means it's sunk. The pigments have sunk too far. The other way that you can get dull watercolor or gouache is by overworking it. So mixing it too much in the palette or on the page, you can kill it. You can kill those pigments. But this is in my Stillman and Burn Epsilon series, and this paper is wonderful. It's very thick, and it's got a lot of sizing, and the paint set up on top beautifully. It also gave me wonderful texture. I was playing with different textures and brush marks. I just absolutely, I was like, this is definitely the paper. I was absolutely loving it. I mean, none of this is like serious. I'm just was playing, but this, yeah, I can just tell a difference. So that is going to be my sketchbook that I'm going to work in for a little while. I wonder if I've already done any watercolor in here. I think that's watercolor and it was one of my abstracts. Okay. No, I haven't done a lot in there. So I've got that whole sketchbook. So that'll be wonderful. Okay. Let me show you. This is, I feel like I've got stuff stacked everywhere. So this is the sketchbook. I did, what did I do? Oh yeah, I can't remember. Did I already show y'all? I can't remember if I showed you this or not. But I did this sketch in watercolor and I also used oil pastels. And I think that's it. And it was fine. I was happier with this than anything. Then I did this, but this is a mix of all my stuff. And it, that was fine too. But So I did that and I was just kind of like, uh, 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 uh. and then, oh, I flipped one page over and I was like, I love this. This is watercolor and gouache. And I thought, well, I love this. I love, I do think I love the movement, but I've got value. I've got texture. Then 
So I was flipping through the rest of this. This is not watercolor or is it? What is this? Let me lick it and see if it moves. This may be acrylic. I did this, I don't know why I'm showing you this, but basically I did this in my still life workshop, online workshop that I did. I was like, oh, I love that. I know a lot of you guys took that and loved it, but like I flipped to this and this is all watercolor. I love this. Look at the texture. See, I do forget the wonderful texture you can get. Look at the texture in her eyes. I think the sun is creeping in. Let me close this curtain just a little bit. I hope that didn't make it too dark. So was that all in here that I wanted to show you? I think so. Well, like I think this was watercolor and some other things, maybe soft pastel. But I was kind of like, oh, I can do it. That's soft pastel and watercolor. So that gave me the oomph to carry on. So these are the books that I got out. Let me show you some of them. This is a really old one. Sarah Wimperus, I think is how you say her name. Not everything in this book is done in watercolor. Maybe some of the earlier ones. I don't think I found a ton of inspiration from this. It's funny, I remember I got this book. I really loved Sarah's work. I still love her work, but it feels so tight now. I mean, some of these are really nice and loose. That's watercolor. Um, a lot of these early sketches are watercolor. So I was just kind of looking at value and how she was using it. Then I got out David Hockney's book. I was flipping through it, and he wasn't really doing any sketching. He was just sketching with like the brush, and I was like, yeah, I definitely could get back to that for sure. I mean, wouldn't that be nice to not even take out any pencils, but just to be able to sketch. And I used to work like that. So this was good to remind me of how to work and was reminded me of some older work. The book that I went to go get and then I grabbed those others was Charles Reed. He's who I studied under when I first started getting into watercolor. And I took some of his workshops. He was a great teacher. He's not alive anymore, but some of his books and he's got some great teaching videos out. Great, great, great. I think I have most of them actually. Uh, his work is just wonderful. It's vibrant. It's got tons of texture. He's got several books out too for figures. He does great figures and I always love how they parts of the figure go off the page and the way he would do composition. Um, just, yeah, he's just excellent. So let's see, there are a couple like this. Look at the texture he's gotten and that. Um, and then there's a couple back here that I just love with the little tiny figures. Let me see if I can find them. I've shown this in another video someplace, but well, even like that, look at, look at all the texture and value in this. I love that. See, this would have been nice to have looked at for my beach vacation for the pool. He got nice value in there. Okay. Where are you tiny people? Oh, I love this sketch. So nice, like kind of village scene, but look at those people. They're just loose. They've got character. I just love them. So I'm going to take this book with me on our camping trip to look at and remind myself of a lot of this is bringing back all the study that I did under him and how to use the brush. Yeah, just... He's just really, really, really great. Then I got this at a used bookstore. And this guy, and a lot of his stuff is so much more tight than I am. But he does have some looser stuff in here, but he works in watercolor. He gets gorgeous color. I know I've showed this book before too, so I don't want to spend too much time. But I just wanted to show you the books that I thought, ooh, I want to look at. See how they're using... I mean, look, how that's so much more detailed than what I work, but that's all in watercolor. But I want to just see and remind myself of value. So, like, I'll look at something like this and squint my eyes and see what is he making darker and lighter and how is he bringing the eye to the center of interest. 
and how dark is he going with his darks. All right, so I think I'm gonna wrap this up and continue to play and incorporating more of these watercolors. I've been even thinking about how I can pare this down even more because if I could get it down to my little bitty, like my middle palette that I have would be great. I will see you back here in two weeks with something, <laughs> probably another studio vlog because I'm in this process and I usually bring you guys along with me as I do a process. I feel like it's always fun. At least I enjoy like walking with an artist as they're kind of discovering things. So, all right, you guys have a great week and I'll see you back here in Say, I always do this. Why did you do that? That's four. I'll see you back here in two. One, two, two.